Hello and welcome to another fantastic video, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> welcome guys. Um, so, I just wanted to go over something real quick today that I have now on my workbench is a new tool to pull clips. These darn spring clips, well, transistor spring clips, who knows what they're called. They're really called a pain is what they are. Um, I have more tools sitting on my bench and you can shake a stick at for different situations of clips, different kinds of clips. And uh, over time I have found that I use one tool in particular uh, a majority of the time. Hold on, as soon as I can find it. So one tool I use for a majority of the time is my little side wrench here and that I stick in there and I pull back and pull the clip off. That's not the actual one. I don't know where the actual one is. It's on my bench. Oh, here it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. So what I do is I grind the bottom off just a hair just to make it fit within that clip. But if you notice, sometimes these clips are a little bit, they're a little tight. Like you can just see this one here. Um, I have it in there. I can pull it off right now if I wanted to, but over time when you're pulling 50, 60 of these things on an amp or 100 of these in a day, your fingers get sore. So, so sorry about that. So what I did is I got myself a spring puller and it's higher. It's got a much, well here, let me, uh, it has a much wider handle. Let me see if I can actually get you guys. Yeah. So it has a much wider handle for me to grasp, and and it takes a lot less effort to pull these clips off. I mean, they literally just pop right off. No stress to the knuckles, no stress to the hands, no bending of the clips, and that's something I get a lot. Customers will try to pull their own clips, and then they'll bend them, and, well, it makes it to where it's pretty hard to put back together. But I'll just go right down the line. With this new tool of mine here, less stress on the knuckles because I do have arthritis in my hands. Hurts, hurts. You guys with arthritis know what I'm talking about. Uh, it can become pretty debilitating. But yeah, so what I did is I just took a spring puller. Uh, Timu special here, guys. Just ground the bottom off just a hair. I did have to do just a little bit on the top to make it flat to fit into the square hole here. A little bit better uh, but uh, but yeah that uh, that's what I made so another spring puller guys you just have to get creative uh, with your tools I've got I have that one the red T handle now I've got hold on not done not done I've got more modified tools To pull spring clips and I really care to have but you know it's it's just something you got to do but yeah so that's what it is I'm just ripping this power supply out of here obviously because uh, yeah um, vibration damage guys tighten your end screws every now and then with your big builds get down over here and tighten up your end screws when those end screws come loose and this this mounting plate bracket end plate starts it'll actually move enough to break the legs off these transistors and that's what happened with this amplifier is uh he broke thermal paste uh he broke the uh broke the legs off the transistors right over here pretty visible oh i can't see because i'm in the way but that's what i wanted to show you guys you can get these cheap things on timu you can modify them to help your day out Thanks for watching, guys. Got any questions? Please leave them down below. And again, as always, keep your fingers out of the rails. This particularly can get really spicy. So, thanks, guys, for watching. Stay safe. Catch you on the next one. Hello, and I'm back for more, guys. Hey, uh, so I was just, uh, I think this is going to be added into the video where I went over the new clip puller that I made from my Timu special. 
spring puller. Uh, but I'm going to try not to digress too much. Uh, so this is a typical Korean, what we call Korean power supply. Um, well, not so sure that you would call this typical, uh, but because of these drivers here, but disregard that for right now. This right here is absolutely common, typical, typical common layout, um, except I think these are the 1404s for the power supply, which is good, good transistor. But I just wanted to go over this particular chain of events that, um, in, that caused this failure and what I look for when it comes to determining what steps I need to take to repair the amplifier. So this amplifier failed directly from vibration damage. And I, you probably down here in the corner right over here guys these transistor legs are broke off flush at the board uh, so this right here is a vibration damage board um, and these two here that are broke off and this one right here so this is drain source and this is the source uh, most likely caused the tra this transistor to fail quite significantly obviously um, which then took out some other transistors along the line whatever carried the load current until the system got shut off but these are all drain source shorts and not so much as a direct gate short so that kind of gives me an idea of where all the current went um, a lot of times when you have a failed amplifier from overcurrent or just being driven into the dirt, you're going to lose your gate resistors. And these 22 ohm gate resistors, they're all completely fine. So that just tells me this was a chain of events that led from vibration failure. Uh, transistor legs broke. Transistor failed, shorted. Well, you can't have one transistor on while the others are trying to switch on, which is the reason why you see one side failed of these four transformers it's because one side was still on while the other side was trying to switch well when that happens boom it blows up its neighbor <laughs> so um and it just kind of goes down the chain um so this particular installation in my opinion did not have a ton of current behind it uh, otherwise this board would probably be cooked pretty bad uh, these are, I do believe, like, again, these are the 1404s, which can carry a, just a ton of current. Uh, so that's kind of that's kind of where I'm leaning towards this. Uh, so this was not an overcurrent failure, so I have no concerns about the output section, the amplification section. Uh, now, if this was a failure from overcurrent, obviously, then we'd be looking, you know, pretty heavy into the output section. But this is just a standard vibration failure and just a telltale sign of vibration failure is I'm going to move this around just a little bit so that you guys can see what I'm talking about here. But let me get my bright pointer right here you see this shiny spot this is where the heat sink was rubbing and wearing against the end plate and it's on both sides and let's see here and there it is again right here so this end of the amplifier was vibrating uh, against the heat sink and well guys you know these transistors are they're clipped pretty dang hard to the heat sink and if you have a solid object here and an object down here that's moving, you, the only three things you have are these three tiny TO220 transistor legs sticking out of this board. And then they break off flush right at the board. So, vibration, guys. Um, I'll tell people every now and then, get down there, tighten up these screws, tighten them up, make sure they're tight. If they're stripped out, take them out, put longer ones in, 
to grab more of that heat sink just as long as you make sure this end plate is tight um yeah i just don't want amplifiers to fail i got thermal paste all over me i mean don't get me wrong keeps me in business but at the same time i like to help save money for customers pirateship.com <laughs> uh so i just wanted to add that guys again thanks for watching uh, if you've got any questions, leave them down below. Stay safe, guys. Thanks.